Hey, Barbara. Hey. Hey, is that thing on right there? How you doing? <laughs> I want to welcome those who are online with us too. Thanks for coming. Thanks for joining us. Pajama Sunday is real. <laughs> uh, my church does it too, and it's a new reality, and I love it. If I wasn't preaching, I'd be there hanging out. Um, it's great to be up here with you guys. Thank you for inviting Karen and I up. Uh, we're, we're definitely encouraged to be up here with you and encourage you guys. I know there's a big wedding going on, yeah. so I, I don't know if this is, is this being recorded. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. This is awesome. Maybe those who, who are mystic can, can double back. Um, I'm going to do a, a, a story today about Peter and his relationship with Jesus. And I also think there's a lot of value in seeing how Jesus made disciples. You know, a lot of times if you grew up in the church, you're made almost, almost to believe, like, if you go outside this door and meet someone walking, they become a disciple like that. That's not how Jesus did it. No. Jesus was very wise in how he made disciples. And I think it's a really good example for us to follow his method of how he made disciples. And I'm going to share a story with you about Peter. And Peter, how he identified with Jesus and became one of his followers, a profound follower of Jesus. If you've ever been around a fisherman, they're salty, they're smelly, they're hardworking, right? They're gruff. I mean, I've been out on the boat sometimes, when, you know, when I go out to fish in the ocean, and those guys are some of the most hardy men on the earth. They're just the salt of the earth kind of guys. They can, they can be in the waves like this and still eat in their omelet. <laughs> and I'm like, Whoa, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just losing my lunch. And they're like, this is great. The ocean's awesome, right? So these are some very hardy, hardy men. And the Sea of Galilee was it was quite a large lake. They had squalls there, so it was a huge lake. So this is the story of Peter before he became a disciple, before he was appointed an apostle, and before he was appointed an elder. In the church in the New Testament. So this is a fascinating story. A lot of lessons here to grab from Jesus. But I want to focus on identity. Who are you? Like, who are you? Like, I, I have to ask that question every morning before I get up out of bed. Who am I? A cup of coffee later. Oh, I'm a disciple. That's right. I'm a Christian. Right? <laughs> so sometimes we can forget our identity because it's a lot of what we do is who we are. I'm a doctor. I'm a businesswoman. I'm a teacher, I'm an engineer. Those are things that we do, but it doesn't answer the question, who are you? Right. It's a deeper question. Right. You know when you have a conversation with someone, what do you, almost, it's, it almost always goes down to, so what do you do for a living? Yeah. Versus who are you? Yeah. I'm Gio, I'm a son of an immigrant family that, was, that came from Ecuador, Nicaragua, and I was born in Hollywood, California. I was raised with speaking Spanish, but I lost my Idioma. I lost my language. So I'm, a, I'm what's called a, a coconut now. I'm brown on the outside. You know? But my Spanish is terrible. And that's who I am. And then at 22 years old, I became a Christian. A follower of Jesus. That's who I am. A follower. Not a perfect follower, but a follower. Amen. Ups and downs, I follow. Amen. Okay? Amen. So this is a great story. Who are you? <laughs> Simon, before he was Peter, he was a fisherman. So I'm going to show you a picture that's what he did all the time. And if, you, if you're a fisherman in Galilee, you catch fish near the shallows at night. That's when you catch the fish. You don't catch them during the day on the sh uh, in the deep end. You always catch them in the shallows because they have to throw a net out there. You don't want to throw a net in deep waters, right? So this is the story of how Simon the fisherman becomes a disciple. So Simon's having a bad morning. His two sets of brothers, Simon and Andrew, and James and John, they, they get back from a trip from catching fish. But because this is their line of work, this is what they depend on. And they've already met Jesus before, so they've already had interaction. Jesus knows who they are. He, in John 1, you see the interaction. We found the Messiah. So time goes by, and Jesus is interacting with Peter, Andrew, uh, James, and John. He knows them. And so, he, so Jesus decides finally... To reveal himself to Peter and who he is. But Peter's having a bad morning. He was out all night and there's no fish and he's frustrated. If you've ever gone fishing with the goal of fishing and you and you come back with nothing, everyone asks you, how was the, how was the yeah. bite today? You're like, it was terrible. I didn't yeah. catch anything, right? You're a little embarrassed. So Simon's scrubbing his nets and he starts to hear voices coming. And he probably looks up and he sees a little crowd coming. 
Oh, what's that crowd? There's Jesus, the rabbi. He's, he's like, man, I'm tired. I've been up all night. I've worked hard. I've caught nothing. I've cleaned my nets. I just want to be left alone. So here's Jesus comes across, and he's coming to change Simon. He's coming to identify himself and reveal himself to who he really is. He's heard Jesus preach. He's heard some messages. They're on friendly terms. And so Jesus comes by. And if you let Jesus get close to you, he can annoy you. If you let Jesus get close to you, he can annoy you. Because when you start to follow Jesus, you start to do the things that he wants you to do. And you may not feel like it. That's annoying. So here is Peter in the account of Jesus and him interacting. Jesus comes by and says, you know what, Simon? Can I get one of your boats? And, and he, I just claimed it. I'm done for the day, Jesus. So he, since you're the Lord, you're the rabbi, whatever, come on in. So he gets in one of the boats, when the one belonging to Simon. You don't borrow someone's boat unless you know them. Right? You don't borrow someone's boat unless you know who they are. So Jesus and Peter know each other. So Simon, can I borrow your boat? Can you put it out a little bit to the shore, to, out, to the, out in the shore? Because I want to be able to speak to a larger audience. And Peter, you know, is, is, is willing to do it, but he's struggling. It's a little struggle there. He's, he hasn't caught anything, and he knows that Jesus is amazing. He knows he has great teaching. He knows he likes to, to, to gather people and teach them great things. But he may not feel like doing this. And so as, as Simon pushes out his, uh, his boat toward the, uh, toward the water, Jesus goes and says this. Next slide. He goes, hey, Peter, or hey, Simon, can you put your water out into the deep water? I think I want to go fishing now. Wait, wait, wait. I just came from there, and there's nothing there to catch. I was out there all night. I didn't catch a thing. And besides, I'm a fisherman, and you're just a carpenter. I know how to fish. And number one, duh, you don't go out in the deep water during the day. You, don't, you catch the fish in the shallows. Peter knows this. Jesus apparently doesn't know this because he's just a carpenter. So Peter, Simon, is a little bit annoyed. You have these little thought bubbles that he's probably coming up. And he's probably just like, what are you talking about, Jesus? I'm not doing this. This is not how you do it. And this is what the Bible records. His response is, Master, <clears throat> we've worked hard all night. Can you, can you notice the act? We've worked hard all night, Jesus, and we haven't caught anything. See, that's why we don't want to go out there right now. I'm going to try again tomorrow, Jesus. Not now, Jesus. But, you know, but because, you know, you say so, you're the rabbi, right. I'll go ahead and let down the nets. There's a little bit of a struggle here with Peter, and he's annoyed by Jesus. I don't want to do this, Jesus. I, Jesus goes, let's push you out of the deep. I don't want to go into the deep, Jesus. Let's get deep spiritually. I don't want to get deep spiritually, Jesus. I'd like to stay in the shallows. It's easier that way, right? Right. Kids all talking about fear and stuff. I'm like, yeah, she gets, she gets scared, right? right? So here's Peter and Jesus interacting, and you, you can see the struggle. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't want to go and put the nets right. out into the deep. You see, if you let Jesus get close, he can be annoying. Okay. And Simon is a fisherman, and Jesus isn't a fisherman, but Jesus is somehow pretending to know more than Simon. At least it appears that way to Simon. Mm -hmm. You know. If I ask you for a ride home after church and we get in your car and, and, and I just look at you and you go, hey, Gio, where are we going? And you start getting out of, out of the driveway and I'm just looking at you like smiling. And Gio, where are we going? You're like, Gio, why are you smiling at me? And I'm just looking at you and you start to drive and you're wondering, Gio, where are we going? And I start to fiddle with your radio like, leave my radio alone, Gio. It's my radio. Don't, don't mess with my stations. And I start, to, I start to scoot over to the driver's seat of the car. And I start taking over the wheels. Like, Gio, stop. I'm going to crash. And I start to take over your, your vehicle. You would look at me, number one, weird and stop doing that. You belong in church, Gio. Go ahead and preach. Leave me alone. <laughs> or imagine if you like to play golf or tennis. And you're, gonna, you're, you're getting up to the golf ball. And you're setting yourself to hit, to hit the ball. And I come behind you and I hold the club with you. And I just go with you in the back. And be like, Gio, you, Gio, what are you doing? You belong in church. Or what if you invite me to your house and I sit on your couch and I grab the remote control before you do? 
and I start to play with it. Gee, that's not one I can watch. And I start to fiddle with your remote control, and I start to put my favorites on there. And then you, Geo, stop. It took me a long time to sit that remote. Leave me alone. And your thought bubbles go on something like this. This is my remote. This is my golf club. This is my car. Geo, you belong in church, okay? Leave me alone. I'm doing fine. I don't need you. If I ever behave that way, please tell me not to do that. And I think the problem sometimes is that I'm not here to control your life because I'm just a preacher. But the problem is we tell Jesus, I don't need you. Right. Leave me alone. And he's supposed to be in your life. Mm -hmm. He's supposed to be walking with you every day. And that's some of the problems that we face. We, we, we reject Jesus interjecting himself into our lives. And we miss the Holy Spirit. Wait. We miss him. Like he's always three steps ahead. Right. But we miss him. Because we don't want God to take controls of areas of our life. Right. Because yeah. we get annoyed. Right. It's annoying to start following Jesus sometimes. Because Jesus wouldn't know about my finances. Jesus wouldn't know about my friendships. Jesus wouldn't know how I drive my car and how I like to speed 15 miles past the speed limit. He doesn't know what I'm like at school. He doesn't know what I'm like at work. Jesus, just, just leave me alone. Stay in church. I'll see you on Sunday, Jesus. Yeah. But stay out of my life during the week. I've, been, oh, I've always said those kind of, so kinds of jokes. I've always had this kind of attitude. I've always treated pe people the way, this way. I've always done that. So just stay in church, Jesus, and let me be. Mm -hmm. I'm the fisherman. You're not a fisherman. This is my turf. Church is your turf. Mm -hmm. And that's how sometimes we can live as disciples. Right, right. On Sunday, we get a spiritual, you know, pick me up. But then we go back to what we do, not who we are. Right. It's tough because church really starts tomorrow for you. This is a gathering that's encouraging, but church really starts Monday. Yeah. Right. It starts right. when you when you walk into your work and your job online or in person, you're at literally at church because you're the church. Right. This building's not the church, you know, although it's very nice. Right. You're the church. Yeah. So when you go to work tomorrow, you have like three or four visitors sitting right there. You know how you act at church like super bro, love it, it's amazing. Right. And at church you're like Where's my coffee? Do your job. <laughs> it's like we're so like, like anti-Christian at work. I mean, you're at church. You're literally at church. And you're like, hey man, it's good to see you. How was your weekend? You know we are here? Yeah. But when we go to our job, we're like the opposite. We're like, mm, you're not a Christian, obviously. And we get grumpy. And it's a visitor at church. That's not how we treat visitors who come to church. We're like, we're so glad you're here. That's, that's your church service. So... When you say, well, I haven't had a visitor at church in years, that's a lie. You got a visitor every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And if you have every other Friday off, you may not have a visitor, but you go to the store as a visitor. Everywhere you go is church. So that's what I, I rearranged the way I thought about Christianity. And I started living my life that everywhere I go, I'm at a church service because I'm the church. And I've been teaching my church this for years now. You're the church. And so Peter here is with Jesus. And Jesus is getting close. And Peter is saying, Jesus, I don't need you. I don't need you. And so Peter. Next slide, please. Peter realizes something. In verse 5 of the same story. Next slide. He throws out his nets. Remember, Peter's, Simon's upset. He doesn't, he doesn't want to be out there. Right. It's in the deep water. It's not where you should be. And Jesus goes, throw your net out there. And they catch such a large number of fish that his, the net begins to break. Huh. And as soon as that happens, can you imagine the reaction of Peter? I mean, if we let Jesus get close, he annoys us. But we, if you let him get closer, wow, he does know how to fish. <laughs> Jesus does know what he's doing. I'm the guy who doesn't know how to fish. I was out there all night. Jesus, you know what you're doing. I'm the guy who doesn't know how to have good and healthy relationships. I'm the jerk a lot of the time. Jesus, you really know what you're doing when you talk about treat others the way 
you want to be treated. He really does know about how to have great marriages and relationships. He really does know how to teach what it really truly means to handle money. He knows how to have great friendships. He knows how to have a great marriage. He knows how to handle anxiety. He knows purpose of life. He does know. I'm the one who doesn't know. And Peter responds and he does this. Next slide. Go away from me. At that moment, he realizes he is scared. Jesus was annoying from a distance, and he got a little closer. Now Peter is frightened. He goes, go away from me. Right. I am a sinful man. Wow. He's scared. He went from being annoyed to being fearful. Because Simon is super scared. And he has this attitude, maybe Jesus, maybe you don't need me. Maybe I'm too sinful for your mission. You can't possibly use me. I'm too sinful. Yeah. That's where Peter's at. Because Jesus got close and he goes, man, I'm the one who's messed up. But I'm afraid you won't use me. You know, when I became a Christian, I thought it was unsavable. I didn't think Jesus could forgive my sin. I didn't believe it. Like in my heart of hearts, I'm like, I don't know. I've been going to church most of my life and uh, I've kept this one tucked away. It's that one sin where I was in a relationship with a woman and we chose to abort our child. And I kept that to myself. Right. And that was deep. And I'm like, I can't forgive that one. That's a hard one. I wouldn't forgive that one. And it was difficult. And I felt that. Go away from me. You can't use me. You can't. And then I became a disciple. Then I struggled with being pure. I struggled massively my first two years as a Christian. You can't use me. I'm too sinful. I can't. I can't. How do you, how do you not kiss a girl? I mean, how do you not? I mean, I was like, I was perplexed by the, by the disciples. Like, how? How? Because I just was too sinful. I'm like, I can't do it. I cannot do it. And I would tell the Christians, like, I don't know how you guys do it, but I don't think I can do that. No, I guess you can't, bro. Yes, you can't. I'm like, no, you can't. I'm too simple. Yeah. Turns out I can do it. <laughs> Turns out I did it. Yeah. Because I let Jesus, you know, he, he does go about relationships. You know, I was the one who was like, you know, you don't know how to do relationships. I know more right. No, Jesus, I know how to do it. Yeah. And I was there. So I relate to Peter. Does he annoy you? Does he scare you? Are, you? are you like, man, he's always trying to run my life. <laughs> my life is just fine, Jesus. I don't really need you right now. Or does he scare you? You're no longer annoyed, but maybe you're scared. Maybe you're scared of what he's capable of. And maybe you realize, man, maybe you start to think, maybe I'm not fit to be his disciple. Maybe, maybe he doesn't want me. And a lot of people find themselves right there afraid they're afraid to follow Jesus because they're convinced that he doesn't need people like you and that wouldn't be such a problem except we stay there I'm going to share something with you here next slide next slide um, yeah unfinished Bibles Simon had an opportunity to walk away from imagine if Simon just walked away at that moment like, you, you don't need me he left there would have been no preaching at Pentecost no, he wouldn't, have met, he wouldn't have met Cornelius. He wouldn't have been an elder in the church writing letters that we read today. It would have been over. He would have walked away. Imagine Moses goes, I, I can't, I'm not good with my speech, Lord. I can't do it. And he walks away and doesn't rescue the Israelites. Imagine if he did that, unfinished. And he walked away. And God has to use someone else to do it. And Moses just walks away and goes, I can't do it. I'm not a very good speaker. Right, right. Imagine if Mary goes, that's a funny story, Gabriel, but I'm not having a, ba a baby. Imagine if Mary was... I don't want to have Jesus' baby. I don't want to have a child. I want to be married to Joseph. I don't want to be a scandalous woman. I'm not doing that. Imagine. Right. Unfinished. Oh. Have you ever heard of this movie? Next slide. Wonderful Life. Sorry about old school. If, you're, if you are young, uh, young under 30, I apologize. It was so good. I grew up watching this movie. This movie was on, we had three channels back then. And this, it was on the channels on TV. Yes. It was awesome. I mean, it's slow, but it's awesome. And the story is this. Here's the story. Of, of George Bailey. 
George Bailey is at the end of his rope financially, and he wishes he had never been born. So this angel, Clarence, God sent this angel, Clarence, and he shows up because he wants to get back his wings. He lost his wings, and he wanted to get them back. And George is kneeling by the gravesite of his little brother, little brother Harry. And he, and he broke, Harry broke through the ice, and he drowned at age nine. And that's what Clarence is telling George. And George goes, that's a lie! That's not true! My brother Harry went to war. He got the Congressional Medal of Honor. He saved the lives of all the men on his transport ship. Every man on that transport died, said Clarence. Harry wasn't there to save them because you weren't there to save Harry when he fell through the ice. And at that moment, George realized something. My life does mean something. God can use me. You know, a lot of times we question. We question ourselves like, I'm not very good at reading the Bible. I can't teach someone about children's ministry. I can't serve in that ministry. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how to break this habit. I can't give up this habit. I love it too much. And we put pause. We hit the pause button on our life. And sometimes we stay there for decades. Like, let somebody else make the disciple. Pause. I can't do this. Pause. I know that Jesus calls us to make disciples, but I don't think I'm good at it. Pause. I know the Bible says to forgive and be reconciled. And that sounds really hard. And honestly, I didn't cause the problem in the first place. And we just hit pause. And we stay there for years. And our bios are unfinished. Because God is not finished. You know, there's some days I wake up going, why do I do this role? Mm -hmm. Like, sometimes I get up, I'm so discouraged on a Monday. I'm like, why do I do this? Why do I, why do I do this? It's so hard to leave the church. Yeah. Because you got to motivate you know, back in the old days, like, you better do this wrong, I'm going to yell at you, right, in those days? <laughs> and then there's a, life is easy, right? But it really wasn't motivating, was it? What I find the hardest thing about being a minister today is you truly got to inspire people. Right. For number one, you got to be inspired. Like, I got to, like, man, quiet time, what's it say, Jesus, preach time, but you get fired up, right? Yeah. And then you inspire other people by your actions by what you say to them, how you encourage them, you inspire confidence. Right. And I'm like, I can do that. I got the gift of gab. I can do this, right? And I started realizing, you know, being inspirational is much harder, but way more healthier for the church. Yeah. Yeah. Way more healthier. I don't chase disciples. I don't, I don't run them down. Like, what are you doing? I'm, I'm in the bushes. I would not. I don't, I don't want you. I hope that you're living like a Christian. I hope that you're concerned about God. I hope, I really do. And it gives you the freedom to choose. Yeah. Hey, am I annoyed by Jesus? Am I scared of Jesus? And that's where Peter is at. At this moment in time, he's scared. And if we let Jesus get closer, he does something else to us. He uses us to make a difference in the lives of others. Amen. That's where he wants to take us. But at first, we have, to, we have to get past the annoying part, and we have to get past the unpausing the button part, not being scared anymore. And we have to, you know, we let them closer. What, ha what happens? We start to make a difference in the lives of other people. Look what Jesus tells Peter. Don't be afraid. Peter's shaking. It's funny because I tried saying that to my wife, and it doesn't work. But when Jesus says it works, I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> like when I say it, it doesn't work, it backfires. When Jesus says it, it calms her down. Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. But notice how Jesus did it. He did it through relationships. Yeah. He did it by building a friendship with Peter. And then he revealed himself to Peter. And I think that's a good model for a church. For a church to grow in, in making more disciples. I think there's a model here for us. Is to build relationships with people that are in your life already. Like God already put them there. If you, if you think about it. And make a list of 10 people that are, are around you. That do things around you. Like maybe your kids sports. Kids school. PTA meeting. Right. Work. Right. Right. You know that, that same grocery store you visit every single week. Right? Exactly. There's people there. Yeah. Already. And God's like I'm, put, I'm bringing them people. 
and you're the church. Imagine if you write that down and take a really take an inventory. Who has God put in my life? Right. And I just take some time each week to encourage them, Amen. to be with them, Amen. to walk with them. And then you'll find out things about them like, oh, their mom died. Let me go bring some cookies and flowers. Yeah. Let me go spend the afternoon over there. Oh, someone's sick. Well, let me go send some flowers and pay you a visit. Oh, you had a birthday. Oh, yeah, people love birthdays. We love little parties. Maybe you invite them over for dinner. Maybe they invite you over for dinner. Yeah. Oh, maybe you start having a friendship. And that friendship can last years. It's okay. Yeah. God put them there. Yeah. Right? I always get faster because I was like, hey, I'm in a friend. Did you invite them? Slow down. Slow and roll, man. I'm building a friendship. <laughs> because sooner, sooner or later, we start talking about God and my faith and what, who I am and what I do. I don't like telling people I'm a pastor. I don't say because I'm embarrassed. I don't like because they change their behavior around me. You know, they, they, a minute ago they were cussing. Then they say I'm a pastor. And all of a sudden they stop cussing. I'm like, no, go back to cussing. It's totally fine. You know, if you can do that. Just be yourself. And, and people change when they find out what I do. They, they try to act like super like, like, it's a weird switch they do. I'm like, no, no. I know we're, I, I know we're friends when you go back to cussing. I know because you're safe. You're cool. I'm not going to confront you, challenge you. I'm like, yo, be yourself. Because over time, Jesus yeah. is going to do something in you through me. Yeah. Right? right? And, I, and that's why I don't try, when I say, oh, I try to avoid what you do, I try to say who I am. I'm Gio. I was born here. I was raised here. Oh, yeah, and I attend church. That's actually the extent of what I say. I rarely go into, I'm a pastor, I'm spiritual. I, who knows? That's weird, right? I don't like that. So look what happens. They pull over the boat. They pull it over on the shore, mm -hmm. and they leave everything, and they follow Jesus. Amen. This is the reaction of Peter, and it's an awesome thing. Peter now, now Simon now identifies with himself as Peter, and Jesus eventually changes his name from Simon to Peter, and he leaves everything. Because of, because of the relationship he has with Jesus. Right. The friendship that Jesus built with him. Jesus reveals himself to Simon. Yeah. And he leaves everything. Yeah. And that's why James and John, that's why they left their dad on the boat. What's that? Because some stranger come, hey, just follow me. And I was, sorry, dad, I'm going to leave you on the boat. Who does that to their father, right? It's a relationship. It was so meaningful to them. They go, dad, I'm called. Right. And I have a call to the young men in this church. That God will raise up young men and women in your generation to come and lead the ministry. Amen. He will do that. But I'm afraid that young people are listening. Amen. Uh, like, uh, there, there is a crisis in our church. Mm -hmm. There's not a young, enough young men and women who want to serve in the ministry. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's because you see us, we're exhausted. Maybe, maybe we're not doing, we're not a better, good enough example in how, you know, we should be. This, this job is exhausting, but it's so fulfilling. Because you're involved in seeing people's lives change. So I want to encourage the young, if you hear God's calling, because this is not a job. Because I would have quit, if this was a job, I would have quit a long time ago. Because I would not put up with this, my work, right? But when you're called to something, you can put up with some shenanigans. Right? <laughs> Because you're called. Yeah. You can put up with stuff, right? Because God called me here. That's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. So if you're called, listen for God's voice because he'll whisper it to you. Right. And you got to listen for it. Yeah. Now, if you're older, it's not like God only wants to call the young. Right. God called Moses at 80. <laughs> <laughs> at 80. We're not, we're not even there yet. <laughs> he called Moses at 80. So you have to listen for his voice too. We just can't go hit the pause button. Let the young bucks do it. No. no. We need the old bucks and the young bucks working together. Right? So here, this is why these guys leave everything. Because it was annoying, it was scary, and it was riveting to give themselves to Jesus. Now look what happens. Jesus dies. Next slide. Next slide on that. So Jesus dies. And then Peter forgets who he is. He forgot. Like early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize it was Jesus. So Jesus died and he resurrected. And they're like, they're out fishing. 
There's an on the boat. Went back to being a fisherman. It was a good run. <laughs> Didn't work out for Jesus. I don't want to get killed. And went back to fishing. He lost his identity. He went back to doing and being a fisherman. After she just told him earlier, you'll make and have three years with Jesus. All the great things he saw, everything he saw, he went back to being a fisherman. The ups and downs of Christianity. And you might find yourself there right now. Maybe you've hit the pause button and maybe you're back fishing. Maybe you've gone back to what you used to be. Just, you know, I, I don't want to do anything for God. I'm just going to go back and exist. Maybe you're there. Hey, guys, friends, have you caught any fish? And Peter, like last time we met, hadn't got anything yet. Nothing. No, they answer. And this is long. You know, he's on the shore, and they're, in the, you know, they're out there in the shallows. They're a little deeper, but they're out there going, no, we haven't. And look what Jesus says, almost verbatim. Throw your net on the right side, not the left. Throw it on the right side of the boat, and you'll find some. And when they did, they were unable to haul them in the net because of the large number of fish. And then Peter jumps off the boat into the water and swims toward the shore and to see Jesus. And you can read that in John 20. And Peter and Jesus asked him, do you love me? I love you. Do you love me? I love you. Do you love me? Now I'm hurt. Why are you asking me that? I'm hurt. And Jesus goes, feed my sheep. Peter was an interesting character. He was salty. He was uh, emotional, sanguine, and he was violent. When Jesus got arrested, he took out a sword and tried to lop off the head of the servant of Malchus. And he missed and he cut off his ear. Like this. He didn't chop it down this way because it would have killed his shoulder and he would have cut that guy turned like this, and he hit his ear. And Jesus had to heal him. Mm -hmm. There's something about that character. Remember, I'm a sinful man. He's emotional, salty, he's violent. And Jesus takes that and harnesses that character into one who becomes an elder. Because he writes in 1 Peter 5, to my fellow elders. There's a transformation of Peter. And it happens because he aligns his identity with Jesus, not with what he does. So my, my encouragement to you is stop thinking about what you do and start thinking about who you are. And when you do that, go back one slide. You're out of order. Build a relationship with those around you. Instead of having just work friends, have a friend. Yeah. Right? They're all around you. Just look and then stay consistent yeah. because there are going to be moments and opportunities for you to minister to them. Yep. You know, uh, today at our Sunday service, my son, we have him on weekends on, on his parole. Uh, he comes back to us. My, he's with my mother, so um, God bless him. Um, and, and my mom uh, releases him on the weekend furlough to us, which is awesome. <laughs> and he comes to church and he has, he's got a girlfriend. He's been dating for a couple years. He's not a Christian. But he comes to church. We don't make him come to church. He can come if you want. Really, yeah, it doesn't matter to us. Uh, we just love him. We're just going to love him no matter what. Amen. And he brings his girlfriend. And today, that girlfriend brought her mom today to church. Oh, wow. And you know what she told me? So I've come to hear, I come to see what I've been hearing about your church from her daughter. Oh, she's like, your, your son is an amazing brother. I'm like, who is that? That guy? You can think his mother. Right? Oh, okay. And it's just this, this relationship that we help, you know, at first when he started dating, you know, started dating, we're like, oh man, you know, it's, you know, because you're always hoping, I want my son to be a Christian, I want my son, you know, we always, we always hope, but then they have their choices, right? Right. So, and we just stayed in there and, and just loved her and loved them and encouraged them and, you know, um, and today was just another, two years later, there's mom and here's her other sister who came to church. It was an amazing moment. I was like, wow, it really does pay off to love people, right? Yeah. It really does work when you love and people feel loved by you and they know you're, you're, you're a Christian. It has this amazing impact. And so she came to see what all the hubbub was about of our church. And so it was, it was, an, it was an amazing moment. And I'm just so grateful that I, I, I aligned myself with Jesus. And so my, my encouragement to you is 
if, you, if you've been around the church for a long time and, you, and you've hit the pause button, unpause it. Because God needs you. Yeah. Your, your bio's unfinished. We're in our 50s, right? Right. Moses in his 80s. We're in our, we, we have a while to go, so hit the unpause and allow God to do something in your life through your relationships, just like Jesus did with his. Let's say a prayer for our service, and we'll close out. And then we have announcements after this. God, thank you so much for Jesus, his awesome example of friendship. Thank you for Peter. What a great brother, and what a great example I can relate to. This, the, uh, the selfishness, the emotions, the sanguine, um, you know, just being a, a, a person that sometimes we feel like, how can you use me? How can you? How can I be a part of your ministry? And, and, and God, you do wonderful things to us, God. Help us to align ourselves with you. Help us to identify ourselves with you. But God, change us from what we do to who we are. And we want to be with you. Jesus, let me pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Amen.